Alpine Comics, The Rise of Copper and 90s Modern. Okay. I was just looking at this, the cover. Tales of Teen Titans Angle number four from 1986. And I was just sort of looking at it, and there it is, and it's sort of, you know that it's an older comic. This is 2024, and we know that this is an older comic. It's like 38 years old or something like that. And so in Australia, in when it turns 50 years old, it's an antique in Australia. Not in Britain, which is 100 years old. But what it is, it's got a bit of age to it now. There is a bit of age starting to build on Tindine's Angle, or Tales of Tindine's Angle number four from 1986. I was looking at that cover and thinking, you know, it's it's not exactly Silver Age cover, but it is still somewhat a Bronze Age cover. You get stuff like that sort of in the Bronze Age of there. And I was thinking, that's starting to get there in terms of age and sort of, sort of if, if you know the mentality, which a lot of us do, those old comics, which oh, it's an old one, which was sort of when we're younger collectors especially, we get a bit of a thrill out of sometimes. When we're, we're new to collecting for the first number of years, the old stuff can be very appealing. And um, I was just thinking that, that is starting to get a bit of that sort of appeal to it, but it's the old stuff. And the thing is, I know this is a collector, but over the years, initially, a lot of the time these days, Mr. Brian McClay, Mr. House of Stein, Mr. Mr. Stein, Ben Stein, and so forth, Mr. Tom, Mr. Gem Mint, a lot of the time, we get these... um. Comics which uh, they're new. And they sell for a bit. And they're, they're popular, but um, what am I trying to say? Yeah. There's a, there's the comics which sort of they're new and they, they can sell out pretty quickly sometimes, but they're on the stand there. And they're just released, and it might have a print run of 40, 50, 60, 70,000, and it's not sold out. It doesn't sell out. It's just a regular issue, which is there in the back as you've been, and no one cares that much. And um, it, it hasn't sold out. But a lot of time, the, the new hot ones, they sell out pretty quick, which is pretty cool for values. But the thing is, something like Tales of Teen Titans Annual. Probably didn't sell out straight away. But the thing is, for all these issues coming out in 2021 and 2022 and 2023 and 2024 with their big print runs, they're not going to sell out straight away. That Fantastic Four number one from a few years back, huge print run, sitting sitting there. But after 30 years, year after year, some of them have shifted. There's been collectors who occasionally nabbed that comic. So it gets to a point with something like this, 38 years of age, a lot of the comics have now shifted from that, and it's, it's probably initial run has sold out well enough and been snapped up a fair bit. You'll still find them back as you've been, some people have sold collections back to comic stores and things. But a lot of them have been snapped up. So with, with all these comics happening these days, over time, they do get gradually collected, especially from DC and Marvel, because they're usually the major collections which are slowly bought. It eventually sells out. The back stock, because it's eventually collected. Things like Fantastic Four, because there's a usual market of Fantastic Four collectors, each issue normally in time will sell out. Despite how lousy ASM is being complained about at the moment at times, it's amazing Spider-Man, Normally, the back catalogue, over time, it's going to sell out. It's going to eventually sell. And at some point after that, demand is starting to increase because it's getting scarce. So the, the, the key to things like this, as I was saying, with it's nice and old and it's starting to look good, there's possibly a psychology in my brain which is working out that this is starting to get valuable. It's 80s. And somewhat true for mid nineties, like Greenland Core Quarterly Number Six. It's not there yet. 
In a decade, it probably won't be there yet, and that's a glut time. But 20 years, it's starting to get, get a bit get a bit of value to it. I don't think there's anything in particular key related about this, but in time, those things sell out. They've sold. The back stock is gone. So with your current collection, I know you just like to flip a lot of it, but it's a buy and hold, and it, it takes decades. But we, we know that bronze now, anything of good grade in the bronze age, you have high prices now. If it's high grade in the bronze age, if it's kept in a good condition, you have high prices. For those moderns now, the, uh, the bracket creep of what's collectible starting to move into 81, 82, 83, 84, 85 and so forth, going through the coppers, is starting to include them a bit because it's, it's finally starting to be collected enough that it's getting a bit rarer and harder to get. 